speak to my heart, oh God. I just usually write, speak God. <laughs> it's pretty easier, pretty much easier for me to include that on a title. But I always enjoy these because they seem so real. You know, they touch me and they seem complete and they always seem to be the way that God would be helping me to be real with him. Because sometimes, you know, we put on these ideas and errors that we can't tell God that, you know, we thank him for a bowel movement or we can't thank God for, or we can't complain to God about lack of a job or we can't acknowledge to God that we're depressed or we can't say that, you know, we're doubting or that we have fears or that we are human beings, I mean, bluntly, and yet when you don't do that, you deny that God is real because God already knows. <laughs> He knows, trust me, he knows you inside and out, shoot, you can't hide anything from him, you know, you can paint the barn, but guess what, he sees beneath the makeup, <laughs> or if the guy's there, you know, it's more like, you know what, you can act like you're macho, but you know, he knows that you're a wimp, <laughs> because inside is where God dwells, and he sees you from the inside out, which if you really thought about that, and you imagined all the nerve endings and the guts, you know, and the tissue and everything, that's a pretty disgusting sight. I mean, really, on the outside, we look like, you know, at least somewhat respectable, but if you saw it from inside out, we look kind of uh, gross, I think. Look like one of those horror films. But, since he does know us, and he said he loved us anyways, what's your problem? <laughs> and that's why we have devotionals, because we do have problems. We still have issues. We still need to talk to God about it. And we still need to hear what God might say to us concerning us. When you want to call it quits, yeah. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say I do that. Are you? Are you hanging on by your fingernails? No, I chew them. Too worn, too weary, too weak to cry out to God anymore? Are you ready to give up, to stop praying, to stop believing, to walk away? You know, it's funny, I used to listen to people that, they'd come up and tell me, you know, I just can't do it anymore, I can't take it, you know, blah, 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 and they'd come tell me whatever their story is, and I'd say, so then don't. And they go, oh, wait a minute, what? I said, so don't. What do you mean, don't? Well, fine, if you want to leave, go. Well, but, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Well, what are you saying? But you're telling me to go ahead and go, and I'm saying, yeah. If you're stupid enough to pay the consequences of your own dumb actions, and you want to run out there and deny the protection that God's given you all this time, and you want to see what it's like to be in sin and to experience all the different ramifications of your own choices and have it all poured upon you even more so because God wants to bring you back then go out and be stupid <laughs> see if I care you'll be back I know that and you know sometimes God used that and it worked but the bottom line is that's what you need to do with yourself most of the time I think you need to recognize that you know what there will come a time where you say hey you know what I'm gonna go try it and you know what you're gonna regret it but if you're dumb enough to do it, then run full full speed, as fast as you can, as hard as you can, so that you can run into that wall as quick as you can to find out that that's not where you want to be. That's my personal opinion. And I think that God rewards that idealism in the sense that if you choose to deny that you have those feelings inside and keep them there, then you're just hiding what god is trying to bring to the surface so that you'll deal with it and give it to him so he can change the direction of where you think you want to go to where he wants you to go do you think i can't bear anymore i can't deal with the incessant pain if i didn't know what i know about god i might tell you to call it quits and to get on with your life but because god is who he is because our times are in his hands and because he's the god of all flesh and absolutely nothing is too hard for him I have to tell you not to give up. Don't get on with your life. Wait, I say. Wait, I say, on the Lord. But how do you wait on the Lord? There are two things you must do. First, learn to sit at his feet. Get to know him. When Martha complained to Jesus that her sister Mary wasn't in the kitchen helping, Jesus replied, Martha, 
Martha, you're worried and bothered about many things, but only one thing really is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 41, 42. Can't we all identify with Martha? We're always preoccupied with present business of life. We're always in a hurry, even with God. We don't take time to let go, be still, to relax, to know in a moment he is God. To wait, Psalm 46.10. To do so requires and it involves a choice. It means that some things will not get done. So, that some people may not understand so, but didn't Jesus say that sitting at his feet and hearing his word was the one thing that was needful? Hmm. The thing which could never be taken away from us, Luke 10, 42. In other words, because of what you learned from him and of him, you'll always have something to hang on to, and it won't be by your fingernails. Second, remember we're doing two things? <laughs> Tell God you want only what he wants, whatever that means. Not what I want, not thy will be done, but what he wants. While such a statement, such a release of your will, your way, may terrify you at this point in time, it may scare the living daylights out of you, like some people say, but if I let God decide, he might send me to Africa. <laughs> Good. And then he might send you back. <laughs> With such a statement and such a release of your will and your way, it may terrify you, but it won't if you make it a practice to do the first thing that I mentioned, to sit at his feet and to know him. Once you know him, you know he won't send you where he hasn't prepared you and already talked to you about. And he doesn't just suddenly, you know, cast you to some faraway land unless you already know that it's in his plan and you've already gotten in mind those things that he has in store. If you will give God your reputation, if you will seek no agenda other than God's, if your goal will be the same as Paul's, that Christ be exalted in your body, whether by life or by death, if, you're, if for you to live will be Christ and to die gain, if you are willing to do his will no matter the cost, then you will never find yourself caught in despair. Rather, you'll find yourself waiting patiently on the Lord for his direction. His life will be your life and your life his. Then whatever he says to you, do it with confidence and without hesitation. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. But you see, in the things that is mentioned, the first step was the first step, not the second. The first step was for you to know him. The first step was for you to sit at his feet. The first step was for you to be so consumed with Jesus that you spend that quality time and quantity time of just being there with him. Not the things you think you need to do. Not the things that you were told or you were scolded or you were reminded or somebody that's around you says, hey, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, you know, because, you know, spending all your time with Jesus, you know, and just working and reading and studying and learning about him, you know, you're going to be so spiritual minded, you're no earthly good. I mean, we've got work to do. You need to get out the butt and do something. If God is teaching you and taking you to a place of studying with him, he wants you to know him for a reason, because there are things that are going to happen that that knowledge will come invaluable. Because the person that is telling you all these things that you need to be about doing, guess what? When the floods come and the rains fall and their house is torn down, are you the one that leads back to the restoration of a relationship with God? Or is that person the one who falls apart because they've lost their material possessions? Their job suddenly disappeared and dried up. They have nowhere to turn to. They have nothing else to do because God is trying to get a message through. One message. That he is God and we are not. And if you really want to be a Christian, you have to acknowledge what he is and be for him, not what you want and be without him.
I'd done it my way. And I've done it his way. And when Jesus said there's only one way, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> and guess what? The only way to find out that there's only one way is the hard way. <laughs> Good luck. You're not hanging on by the skin of your teeth or the fingernails unless you're fighting what God is trying to do with you today. And that's the only way. Because when it's his way, for life or for death, for glory or for not, for whatever it may accomplish, you're just going to say, okay, Lord, you got it. It's yours. Thy will is my will. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you. <laughs>